there was work in a perfect world. Grace and peace, everybody. Welcome to Sabbath School Study Group. My name is Chris Bailey, and we're starting a new five-part series, the idea of planning for success in this overarching theme of stewardship and how to handle God's blessing. The blessing of work. This is a powerful thought because the Bible is very clear on the way that God intended work to be experienced and performed. But we normally think of work in its latter phase. We think of work as the punishment. In fact, it was the chief punishment, the chief consequence of Adam's lack of leadership, of Adam's lack of integrity, and his decision to not do what he knew he should do. But that's not how it all started. It actually started not in chapter three, but in chapter two. See, in Genesis chapter two and verse 15, and the Lord took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. This was so powerful as the gift that God has given to Adam because in actuality, it was in the course of his work that Adam was able to realize his need for woman. It was in this walking that he was able to walk into the greatest gift of all on this earth. And that was Eve, his woman. Now, if this was what God intended work to be, it's really interesting to see that not only is that what he intended to give to Adam, it's as if he paused and then passes on this experience to us. See, in Genesis chapter two and in verse number two, it says that on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. God pauses in a sense to now pass on this blessing, to pass on this gift of not being the creator, but being the steward of his creation, of utilizing his creative capabilities made in the image of God, Adam would be able to share in, not to replace God, but to share in his experience of working with what God has made. This is powerful. So we see that work in a perfect world was actually designed to allow us to experience what it means to be a child of God. And in that experience, we would actually grow. This has nothing to do with money. This is all about meaning. It's about heart and living out God's purpose for us. You know, that's why work is a blessing. In fact, when you read it in 2 Thessalonians 3, 8 to 10, when Paul is speaking to those at Thessalonica, he says, neither did we eat any man's bread for naught but wrought with labor and travail night and day that we might not be chargeable to any of you. Not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. For when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. Now there's a practical, then there's this, this spiritual application of that, that we, it's not right that someone should eat from something or eat from a table that they had no part in. We're not talking about giving or sharing. We're talking about the aspect of work because that would lose or we would miss out on God's spiritual application. And that was to be able to work to then participate in the fruits. If we don't have this experience of working, we are actually missing out. We are starving ourselves from the experience of walking in God's footsteps and living out his design and purpose for us. Again, not to replace God, but to receive him by working as he wills.